Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to come with you um, with another video, and I want to discuss who um, who truly killed the Messiah, who truly killed Christ. Um, was it his followers? You know, was it um, the children of Jacob? And so we're going to, um, right now I have a John 8, and um, this is the um, Synostic Gospel, John, uh, St. John 8, and I'm starting at the 39th verse. This is where um, you see it's entitled here, you are of your father, the devil. So I'm going to start reading at this verse. And he's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. He is talking to the Jewish um, scribes and Pharisees that were in the synagogues. So he says to them, well, it says, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Yahshua said, to, I'm sorry, Yahshua said to them, if ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But ye... Now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. So Abraham didn't do this. You're trying to kill me because I'm telling you God's word. Abraham didn't do this, but you do the works of your father. Then said they unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even of God. So they're saying we have one father. You know, our father is God. So Yasha says to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from him. Neither came I of myself, but of he that sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. Now go back to when you look at that verse, he's saying, okay, look, serpents can't hear serpents do not have ears snakes can't hear so he's saying you don't you don't understand my speech because you can't hear my words you don't have ears to hear me because you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do because he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks of his own because he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. So he's saying you are your father, the devil, even though you claim to be children of Abraham, the devil is your father. You're doing his works. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning and you are, are just like him. And so then we go on down and um, he says, this is where I want to, and he tells them that, you know, they are not a God. That's why they don't understand God's words. So then, I'll start at verse 52, where the, the, the Jews said to him that, you know, he has a devil, Abraham is dead, um, because he just said in verse 51, anyone who keeps my saying shall not see death. So they're like, what is he talking about? He or the devil. What they mean? He, what does he mean? We're not gonna see death. Abraham is dead. Um, and so he's saying if a man keeps his sayings, they'll never taste death. And is he greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead, whom make thou thyself? So then um, Yasha said to them, if I honor myself, I, you know, I'm honoring, my honor is nothing, but my father honors me. And he, of whom you say that he, you saying he your God, but he's the one that honors me. So then he tells them in verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and he was glad. Now they really thinking he crazy because they said in the next verse, you're not even 50 years old and you're saying that you've seen Abraham. And then he says to them, verily, verily, I say unto you, 
before Abraham was, I am. So remember, I am means a higher. So what he said to them was, before Abraham was, a higher. So he was, he was claiming who he was. He, they knew that he was claiming to be God. And they said, and the next verse says that he took up stones. I mean, I'm sorry, that they took up stones to cast at him, but Yasha hid himself. Okay, so he calls them out and tells them, you know, who, who they were. And so, and, and even here, I'm going to go up to, um, He's the, he says it again right here that they are Abraham's seeds, but they seek to kill me. So it's two different places in the scripture where they are claiming to be Abraham's seed. Okay, this is where I wanted to go right here at verse 833. Well, 832, Yasha tells them that you will be my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answer him, and said, we be Abraham's seed, and we've never been in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that ye shall be made free? So what you mean we're we going to be made free? We haven't been in bondage to any man. Okay, y'all, this is the New Testament. The Old Testament, there were four different captivities. Israel had been captured four different times. They were enslaved in Egypt where we had the exodus and they had to be exiled. You know, Pharaoh had to let them go and they were exiled from Egypt. They were enslaved under the Assyrian captivity. The Assyrians invaded Jerusalem and enslaved them. And that's where many were scattered. And that's where the lost tribes came from because many were relocated to different places and they were living in those lands as Gentiles. The descendants were living in those lands as Gentiles, not even knowing that they were uh, children of, you know, of Israel, children of the promise. So that's the second captivity. The third captivity was the Babylonian captivity, where we were um, in cap enslaved under King Nebuchadnezzar. And um, so, so you had the the Babylonian captivity because remember. Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the uh, the statue, and Daniel was actually made third in command in Babylon. Okay, so that was the third captivity. The fourth captivity was under the Medes and the Persian. Remember when Daniel interpreted King Nebuchadnezzar's dream? He told King Nebuchadnezzar that um, you are that head of gold. Because right now your kingdom, you you are the king of kings. You are running the whole world right now. But there will be a um another kingdom, which which were the silver arms and torso that you saw, and that that kingdom will come up behind you. That was the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. They were next to be on top of whatnot. And so then when we get to Daniel five, um. King Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, and I believe his name was like Belshazzar. It was very similar to what Daniel's name was, but King um, Nebuchadnezzar's grandson decided he wanted to have a feast, and he told his, you know, servants to bring out the royal, the stuff that had been taken out of the Most High Sanctuary. He wanted to feast on the gold plates and um, cups that had come out of the most high sanctuary. And while he was uh, feasting, he saw a hand writing on the wall and he call, ended up calling Daniel to come and interpret it because the wise man describes and no one could interpret it. And Daniel said that, um, Daniel read it to him and said, you have been measured, you've been found wanting and the kingdom is being taken from you. That's what was written on the wall. And that very night, he was slain and the Medes, Darius the Mede, took over. And so we were still in captivity under the Medes and the Persians. So we have been in captivity four different times, but it's saying here, they, they say to Yasha, um, what do you mean 
we're Abraham's seed and we've never been in bondage to any man. So how says how said thou that ye should be made free? So <clears throat> now that that's in John 8. So now I'm going to go to Matthew 23. And I think I'm going to start at like the 27th verse. All right, so once again, he's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees here. He said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sceptres, which indeed appear to be beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones uh, and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you, you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sceptres of the righteous. And you say, if we have, if we have been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets, which ye be witnesses unto yourself that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, wise men, scribes, and some of you ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that upon you come all the righteous bloodshed, that upon you come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Bar Barakas, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. All right, so I'm gonna start right there. So remember, and um, I think it was in my last video, I was saying this is the same spirit the same antichrist spirit of Cain but they were absolutely right to say that um they had never been in captivity but he's telling us he called them a generation of vipers he called them sons or or offspring of serpents although they were Abraham's children who was he talking to the scribes and the Pharisees he was talking to the descendants of Esau that were also Abraham's descendants, they had already by this time, no, they had not seen any of the captivities that we'd seen because when Esau went into the Caucasus Mountains, when he went up into the mountains of the uh, European um, area, he started mixing, you know, he started mixing his blood with the different nations. So now his people come down and they had already infiltrated Christ's church at this point. And they were saying that, you know, we, we are Abraham's descendants as well. So we are entitled to it. And they were, you know, even though the promise went to Jacob, they were still Abraham's descendants. So they were able to get up in the um, synagogues and become teachers and rabbis and leaders. These are the same people that are in the land now that call themselves Jews or Jewish. These are the same people that have gotten very, very wealthy off, the, off of free slave labor, okay? Because we know that, you know, for hundreds of years during the slave trade, that um, a lot of, that if you re research it, um, if you go on what I what is it voyages.org, slave voyages org, and you pull up those ships, you will see all the Jewish names and owners of those ships that were um, transporting, um, you know, the slaves to the four corners of the world, and uh, and these are the people that own everything in the world today. And so I'll get back to that too. We're going to talk about um, 
you know, we're going to go more in depth about that. But <clears throat> I like here where the most high, well, um, that Christ, he tells them, fill ye up the measure of your father. So now we're going to go to, he, so he, he's, he's basically telling them like, I'm ready. I'm ready for y'all. I'm ready to unleash on you. You're the ones that kill all the prophets. You from all the, all the righteous in the earth from the bloodshed of Abel at the beginning until now it's been you, the, this bloodline of vipers. And so we're going to go up to Genesis 15. And I think I'm going to go to the 16th verse. I think that's what I wrote down. All right. So this is where um, God is having a conversation with our father, Abraham. And he tells him that, yeah, let's go on. Let me go on up, matter of fact. In Genesis 15, 13, he said to Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. And afterwards they will come out with great substance and shall, and you shall go to your fathers in peace and you should be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come here again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So remember in Matthew 23, he just told them, fill up your father's cup because I'm waiting on the day of the Lord. I'm waiting to come. I'm waiting to unleash my wrath on y'all for all that you have done to, to the prophets or to in it, shed innocent blood from Abel until now. And we got to realize too, that um i'm gonna go to first Thess thessalonians right quick we have to realize as well that um dang i lost my train of thought all right it'll come back to me but i'm gonna go to first thessalonians 2 and 16 that's what i was about to say we have to realize that rome rome is who crucified the Messiah. The Bible says, curse is a man who is hung from a tree. They crucified him and they have hung several, lynched and hung several of his descendants or his um, blood, blood relatives from trees as well um but he just said that in the fourth generation and if you really look up that word generation in hebrew it will say the fourth revolution and we are in the fourth revolution they're calling this age the fourth industrial revolution because it's a this is a age of industry within within the last hundred years we have went from Horses on wheels to trains, buses, planes, you know, uh, flying into space. We've done all this in the last hundred or so years when just in the 1800s we were riding on a horse and buggy or still riding on, you know. Uh, so so this, this fourth generation or this fourth revolution of time is unlike any others. But he basically told our father Abraham, when it was going to take place in the fourth revolution. Um, and so anyway, First Thessalonians 2 and 16, it says here that uh, I'm going to start, da, 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 I'm going to start at 14. Ye brethren became followers of the churches of, of God, which in Judea are in Christ Yasha, Yasha. For ye also have suffered things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who killed both the Lord Yahshua and his own and their own prophets, 
and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. So once again, you see right here, it's saying, it's actually saying forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always because the most high wants the, the sins of the sins of the um of all the people that killed not only his only begotten son but his firstborn son which was Israel that have persecuted them um he wants their cup filled up that he may pour out his wrath against them so um i just okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up but we're going to go into a little more in depth who these people are the seed of esau and connect them to revelations 2 and 9 and revelations 3 and 9 where christ said in the last days that the synagogue of Satan would be in the land uh, claiming to be the true Jews, committing blasphemy by claiming to be the true Jews. So, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and I will talk to you soon in the next video. You all have a blessed day.